Well, hello. Welcome to the Art of Renovation Live. I'm your host, Paul Foster from Contact Renovations and Custom Homes. This week, we are talking with Lee Wright. He is the CEO and founder of the of Vignettes and uh, also the Vignettes Design Series. So um, if you don't know what Vignettes is, you should definitely look it up. It is an event. Uh, well, the Design Series at least has been an event that really has helped to pull together the design community here in Edmonton and showcase the talent that we have here locally. It's... Um, something we've been a part of now for, for several years and we're always excited about it. And, um, and it's really made a very positive impact, I believe at least in, in the city and bringing an awareness to um, the community itself that are involved in design and contracting or artists or makers, as well as, you know, just the general public, people who are interested in, in that type of, a, uh, of scene. And uh, it's, been, it's really been great. Anyhow, I'm just waiting to see if uh, Vignettes pops up here, and there he is. I'm just going to quickly pull up the show cover here before I introduce Lee and bring him in. Bear with me for a sec here. Okay. Okay, so uh, I can see Lee's there, and I guess I'll pull him into the show now, and then I'll introduce him while he's, while he's on the show. All right. One sec. Waiting for Lee to join up. All right. There we are. There is. Welcome. Welcome. Hello. Right on. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Sorry, I tried okay. I had a setup here and then my camera is not at the right spot, so we'll just adjust. Yeah, no worries. I'd rather look at your upper half, so that's a good, no, good that's, that's good, yeah. Most people would. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Well, look, I didn't introduce you yet, and I guess we'll get into that, so you can awkwardly watch me introduce you. Go ahead. So, I'm going to preamble this introduction by saying I read what um, um, Avenue Magazine wrote when you were part of the top 40 under 40, so I ended up using some of that because it really uh, better summarized what I was trying to say. So There you go. Uh, Professional so writers always help. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So on that note, yeah, back in uh, 2017, Lee was um, listed top 40 under 40 by Avenue Magazine and had a lot to do with what he developed. And uh, we'll talk about more that, about that today. So prior to becoming CEO and founder of Vignettes, Lee started off as an artist painting murals. From there, he moved into contracting and onwards into working in his family's design company, Mojo Design Inc. In 2012, he took a career alter altering trip to New York City. Uh, to an interior design show. The show inspired him to create an event that would showcase Edmonton's emerging talent, especially in design. Uh, he then started up a pop-up show, which turned into a month-long festival with the goal of bringing Edmonton's top interior designers, contractors, woodworking and workers, and art and visual artists together. Uh, Lee was blown away when Vignettes brought in a crowd of 100 in its first year, the festival now attracts nearly 10,000 people and headlined Edmonton Design Week in 2017. So I'm going to add another bit saying what that, I guess, what the Vignette Design Series has meant to me, just as a guy that owns a contracting company. And it really has proven to be an event that helped to bring like-minded individuals together who want to do something special. And I think you did a great job fostering that development of the community. I believe it was there, but wasn't connected. And I think what you've done really has helped to, um, you know, to kind of unite us in some way. So, so great job. I'm excited to have you on the show, excited to hear more about what your future plans are. But I think first we'll, uh, we'll dive into your roots, where vignettes came from, and we'll kind of take it from there. So um, awesome. What an yeah. intro. Look, you crushed that. <laughs> well, I don't like when I'm reading it, but at the same time, I also don't like to wing it, wing it too much or all of a sudden you'll be like, you know, whatever. I'll get something wrong and <laughs> you'll get, get me later. Right on. So uh, I guess we're talking about the giveaway item. I'm, I'm notorious for blowing past this thing. So this week we've got a $50 gift certificate to Black Pearl, which is a seafood bar here in Edmonton. If you haven't been there, you need to check it out. It's delicious. Um, our skill testing question this week is really more of um, the intent is to help you remember vignettes. So you need to remember what shape is the logo for the vignettes for vignettes Inc. If you can't answer this question, 
we've got a problem. And I hope you're hungry. So enter your answer into uh, the comments and then we'll get you uh, entered into the draw, which we do at the end of the show. And uh, we'll go from there. This is, will be the most obvious hint I'll give all show. The rest of the time, I think you'll have to guys kind of figure it out. But there's a subtle <laughs> hint in the bottom right of my image. So anyhow, um, so Lee, I guess let's talk about what made you transition out of your family's design company and how did vignettes start? I'm excited about, you know, the process and kind of the roots of this all because it's turned into something really wonderful and, and that doesn't always, isn't always part of the plan where things end up, right? Absolutely. Well, and where it is now and, and the idea where it came from are two completely different things. So yeah, it was pretty life altering uh, creating this festival. Um, as you mentioned in the, the intro, it actually started, I was the marketing manager um, and project manager for my mom's design firm, Mojo Design. Um, they've been trying different ways to market themselves. And I said, you know, we've tried a lot of different ways and avenues, but I just feel like the industry itself, like contractors, designers, artists and things just aren't collaboratively making enough noise to, to showcase the industry. And I said to, to Maureen and Joanne, I said, why don't we take the approach of marketing the industry um, as opposed to just marketing ourselves? And I, uh, that approach was, you know, rising tides raise all ships versus just theirs. Um, and I thought being the marketing manager could be strategic that if there's more demand around the industry, everybody would benefit from that. So how did we go about creating this? And it serendipitously happened that um, Maureen and Joanne had taken us to New York that year as a sales uh, incentive. That was our main sales goal. So if we hit a, a mark, they would take us to this incredible show in, in New York. So. We, we happily met that mark, my coworker and I, and we ended up going and we, once we saw um, how they electrify the whole entire city, you have the main outfit where the main festival happens, but all over the city and in the areas, all these cool little pop-up design parties were happening. Um, so I was, that was the ultimate seed for the idea was how do I connect? And it wasn't just interior designers or people selling products, there was artists and contractors and all different people that make, you know, New York City amazing and beautiful. And it is, if you haven't been there, one of the most beautifully designed spaces when you start getting into some of the commercial spaces uh, and private spaces. Um, so we went about it just very starting small. We were like, well, let's bring it to us. Can we find a group or identify something that might work? And from that point, um, I happened to run into the Student Design Association from the U of A, uh, where I met some design students looking to help promote and foster and, and showcase what they did. And the, the idea was, hey, let's really showcase this, see how much media we could get for you guys, and we'll turn our whole entire gallery into this pop-up design show. And we'll let it run. And amazingly enough, like you said, the first show we did, we had over a hundred people come out. We actually made uh, the news in Montreal from right. our effort on promoting university students. So uh, once we did that, we, we kind of thought, well, let's keep at this. This is a fun little pop-up event we can do annually in our store that'll bring people in and get people talking and, and get the community connecting. Um, and that was the biggest thing was we wanted to connect people just bring everybody together. Um, I know in other cities we had seen like design worlds when you're connecting, people are pretty ferocious and, and very much like stay away from my job or we're always trying to outbid people. Even if you know someone's in a, in a bid, you might be even calling me and like, hey, what are you pricing at? Just so we can kind of, you know, see where you're at just to make it fair. But none of that collaborative um, and mindset was, was truly too, too much there. Um, but then we saw as we built this amazing community and started connecting people, we started seeing people, you know, fast forward a couple of years working together and supporting each other or, you know, calling each other. Hey, I'm, I, I'm pricing this job. They men mentioned your name. Like, Hey, is that a job you want? Or what are you pricing it at? And like, how are we doing it? I found all these really amazing things were spinning off from, from doing these shows. And then eventually we, got too big for my mom's studio 
and we needed to go outside and create a bigger event. And that's, that's kind of in 2015 when we had our first offsite major festival, I would say, but it was still one day. Mm -hmm. um, and then 2016, Edmonton Economic Development was like, hey, you're on to something. Can you do it big? And I always jump into things and say yes. So I said yes, not realizing that uh, doing a festival on your own in a massive 20,000 square foot venue is, is a lot of work. <laughs> mm -hmm. So then, then my life kind of changed after that moment. Once we hit 2016, it kind of became, you know, a, a full-time job trying to put on this festival to see if it could go anywhere. And it was giving me an opportunity to showcase my artwork in large format. Uh, it was giving me an opportunity to connect and meet some of the most amazing people I've met in this city uh, through it. So we just kept on doing it <laughs> blindly almost. And then we've kind of refined it over the years to become something that's, you know, a legit festival. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. It's great to see how it's evolved and, and where it started. And I'm always fascinated by people and their roots, what, where they've come from and what makes them who they are today. And, and I've gotten to know you a bit over the years being part of the vignettes design series. And it's been such a great event and not like as a, you know, being on a team, there's like, that time that builds up to being part of the event, it can be stressful. But uh, one thing that always stands out for me is the VIP gala. And it's become one of those things, in my opinion, that's like one of the, it's one of my favorite events of the year, because I guess you can go there and celebrate what you've built as part of a team within that community. But it's also like so wonderful to see how many creative intelligent and talented people there are in edmonton and those that appreciate it even those that aren't involved just are so excited to see and you can hear people say like wow it feels like i'm in new york or i'm in london it feels like you're in some other city where you realize in the end no man edmonton edmonton's got it too it just hasn't been nurtured and i think that's part of the process and and, you know, I think that's kind of where we're at now is it's it's turned into something so wonderful where you have it's it's catered, you have great music, you've got, you know, um, amazing stuff to look at and sensory like this is it's it's overall a great event. So, you know, um, kudos to you for for helping. And I know it takes it takes a village. So I know it's yeah, it definitely you know, <laughs> takes the village. The photo you're showing right now is actually hilarious because. That VIP party, literally, I, and what stands out is that flooring right there. I remember um, River City Tile and Aaron and Chelsea, they are huge uh, collaborative collaborators on this project every year. Uh, Aaron calls it his Super Bowl. But literally, that paint was so fresh that it was wet as people were coming in. We literally maybe a half hour, hour before finished that floor before that VIP party opened. <laughs> I remember that was a push. At Actually, your guys were like walking out the door as you were walking in, I think. Right. <laughs> yeah, we were there just, just in time to help with cleanup, I think. But, uh, you know, and as usual, like I, I've made so many good friends um, through the event and, you know, like you said, it takes a village and certainly there's a lot of people that stand out. We'll, we'll talk about that a bit. You know, I'll show some photos from the events and these are not in any specific order. Um, but uh, just really, just cool images that pop out to me as whether it be the vignette. I don't know what to call a vignette. Is it a booth? I just call it a vignette, I guess. But um, essentially in like dumbed down terms, it is their booth or their space that they got to create. Um... But yeah, it's a vignette. That's basically what it what it is. The sample space for them. Yeah, exactly. Here's an example of one. If you're not familiar with vignettes, um, this is one from last year. And uh, yeah, fantastic linger designs and a whole bunch of different. There's always four, I guess, some background here. So on on a team, you'll have a contractor, a designer, a maker, and an artist. So that maker could be a woodworker, a metal worker, whatever it might be. Artist is a visual, visual artist of some sort, whether it be, you know, a painter or it could be a graffiti artist, it could be anything, right? So, um, and it's really amazing to see what people will pull together on a team. And, you know, initially, at least in the years I was involved, it was a random draw initially to be part of a team. And uh, I really, really enjoyed the randomness of who I might get to work with, right? Because you meet new people. And in the last years, you, you were able to, um, I think put together your own team, right? It was an option. Yeah, we had to refine that because it's a difficult thing. Some people love and hated that draft, right? You get people that would be like, well, you know, this person doesn't reflect what I want to do in my style. And some people right. would see it as a big obstacle where 
it, I, I thought it was a welcome challenge. It's going to get you out of your comfort zone. You're going to have to work with someone new. I just always viewed any of those uncomfortable pairings of the, the draft as like, you got to work with a client and you make it work. And not right. every client's a great client. You know, every client has their own little qualms about how they react. But it's managing that project and that client to make the, the ultimate goal happen. And it really, that's what happens when you collaborate on these teams. You know, we've had some complete disasters on teams where they just personalities didn't work, but they overcame that and, and pulled off some magic in the end. And, you know, other times you just have it where the teams just click and they're just like so grateful for this new relationship. And I still see people from some of the original vignettes still working together all the time. Absolutely. I can see that. And I'll show you. Here's an image from our team from two years ago, right? So I got, you can't, my, my big head's in the way here. That's Travis from Fitted Furnishings. We have Gwen from Wabi Sabi Design. We have Glenn Ronald and then myself. And I didn't know any of these people. I got drafted onto this team and thought, huh, all right, let's, let's see how this goes. And in the end, we, you know, we ended up getting on the same page and coming up with a, a really a wonderful space that we're all very proud of. And uh, I guess the public liked it too. We had, you know, I guess some recognition through people's choice, which is fantastic, which is never really the goal, but it's always nice to bet to get celebrated on some level and some recognition for the effort. But you're right. I mean, it's a, it's a wild, um, the, the draft can be wild. Who am I going to be with? Right. And um, I think what I liked about it was you couldn't have too many preconceived notions about what you're going to do. You have yeah, to be the thing, right? fluid. Some people come in with the whole, I'm going to do this for it, but it's like, wait, right. come in with that. And some people have come through like my vision, this thing, and I'll just make it work. Or they just meet an artist or a contractor. Someone's like, yeah, but what if we did this? And then it's like, right. that design is out the window. Let's start again and come up with something cool. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just trying to find a couple of images here. They're hard to see in the thumbnails on my phone, but um, from that same year we were last involved, there was this one room here, I believe is the one and everything was kind of like, you know, just nothing was level and all looked distorted. And it was like, man, I don't know if that was like a preconceived notion and a, or we just evolved that way. But one of those things where, you know, just a fantastic end result. And, and uh, you know, there's just so many spaces. This is from a, a year before. Um, and it's funny because I, over the years, got to know the names to people who were part of the event. And now it turns out years later, I'm working with some of them. In this case, you know, we had... Um, and um, Rosalind from Wicked Blue Design was involved in this one. And now she's doing a bunch of design work for us, you know, and it's just one of those things, kind of whatever unites you and shows a common thread and go, yeah, you know what? Um, you know, it's almost like a referral in some way. I remember this one really well, actually. It's jogging. It's, it's so funny going through these photos because even when I sent them to you, I just literally I was going through like collections and just trying to send you the collections and you picking them. But I just I, so many things stand out about this one. It was like, this is in the basement of our uh, vignettes building, which if you haven't been in, it's probably the creepiest basement in Edmonton. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not joking. And, you know, this one uh, with Roslyn, Roslyn was like one of the most organized and attack kind of people I know. Like every year she's been in it, they, she's rattled off the design so fast and so seamlessly. I think she was done before everybody else. Um, and I think there's the marriage of who she was working with. It's, I think this was, uh, is this fitted furniture as well? I can't remember. I'm not sure. I don't remember who was on that team. But the pieces are so mid-century modern, which is what right up Roslyn's alley. And then mm -hmm. she just met Dallas LaRose. And Dallas ended up just coming in. That was her first year. But I, I don't know if I'm wrong. Dallas would connect me. But I think she sent, sold over like $10,000 worth of art from this <laughs> festival just because she did a bunch of live painting. And her stuff yep. was just a hit, obviously. It's mm -hmm. stellar. But I think she did really, really well from that show. Yeah, good for her. It's funny. I think, you know, one of the things that kind of epitomizes vignettes and a need to be, you know, flexible and understand what um, your limitations might be and work within them. Or maybe there's, there are no limitations. But so this one you see now is in the same general space as this yes this vignette and which is this was like a sound and visual experience in itself um maybe you can explain a bit about this one for those who've never seen yeah it. this this one was quite amazing because this was the first time i ever had an architectural firm come in involved in this one and architects deal with different types of products and materials and um the goal of this one was i, I believe is slide to power off and it was the whole way reason of 
muting noise. So when you actually came outside of this, there was a lot of background and fuzzy noise. And they actually had a soundtrack to create the day, daily buzz noise, phones ringing, people talking, all this stuff. But when you'd walk in up this dock towards this beautiful uh, painting, all the sound would almost basically disappear. And it'd be mm -hmm. very, very stagnant sound. You'd just hear yourself talking in the room. Um, it wouldn't be bouncing off anywhere. Um, the whole effect to this whole thing was amazing. And you mean, you come out to that gorgeous painting and um, God rest her soul, actually, Julie um, has re just recently passed on from us. So that was one of her last times she participated in the show. But um, it was just an absolutely stunning thing. And I, I actually still have that dock at our, our space that you can walk out on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember watching her build it because we were right beside her just across the way. And uh, I think there's something like 10,000 pieces of string that hang from here as a sound dampening, um, you know, system, I guess. And you have the sound dampening up in that ceiling, which gives a nice contour. It was really something really it's impressive. $15,000 worth of sound dampening in there. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So it just, you know, I guess it goes to show you, right? I mean, you have... Here's our booth from that year. You can't see much in this photo, but we had kind of a cathedral ceiling type of thing. It was like a mob boss's office. And every space was so different, despite the fact you're in the same building. Working this one with was Gen so League, cool, though. You guys don't dump down. This one was so popular, especially with the, the secret panels in it, too. Well, you know, the, the reality is, is you, I believe, like I worked with Nikki Fliss on this one and Elena from Capensis Metalwork. And we had um, the guys from Real Fresh Canvas in there. And we have Dave Ritter from, um, I remember his furnishing company now, but um, great group once again. But somewhere along the way, I believe you were pushing to make them interactive. So Nikki came up with this idea, well, let's make like a secret compartment. So in there, you can see that painting of the mob boss. And there was a clue on his shoulder. It showed a date. And for those who, you know, could figure it out, if you looked at the encyclop encyclopedias on below it, there was a corresponding date on the book and if you pulled the book, that painting would pop forward and behind it was a stash of gold and cash. And, uh, you know, nobody, it took a while for people to figure out how to give, give some subtle clues. And then eventually once word spread, people were all into it. And shout out to Sean uh, Kessler. He used to work for me and he kind of engineered the whole system. He did a great job putting that together for us. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, that was my first time in vignettes and it was, uh, it was great. We had, uh, we had a blast there for sure. One thing that's really funny about your install is you guys had the cigar box there with full of cigars. Yeah. And some would go missing and stuff like that, but I have so many pictures, which would totally not fly with this day and age, of people posing with the cigar in their mouth. Right. And, and they just put it back in the box. And I just can't imagine with COVID, these, yeah, no this day and age, one, being able to do a festival, but two, um, having stuff like that involved in the designs. There you go. Mayor's got yeah. it in his head. There you go. <laughs> we got El Jefe himself man he looks a lot younger there too yeah yeah i wonder why <laughs> it's been, it's been a rough few years in the old city i've been doing yes he has out of it yeah yeah anyways a couple more shots from our, our little booth there we'll move on here's my team missing a few people oh, you can't see nikki my head's in the way but that's uh elena from compensus metalwork there with me anyhow um yeah so i guess we let's talk a bit about in conjunction with the Vignette Design Series, there's been these pop-up restaurants and these different features that have come up over the years. And I'm actually not familiar with this one that's depicted now. What, can you tell me a bit, a bit about this? Yeah, for sure. So when I, in 2016, we wanted to do a, they really wanted me to include a culinary component. And again, like I said, always two big of ideas, way outside of what I think is obtainable. Uh, so I said, let's build four pop-up restaurants and this will be a side activity that we'll do. And We'll open up all these crazy restaurants all down 104th Street to coincide with the event. And as it got down to it, as we were trying to build up a couple of the restaurants, we decided we'd, a, like a couple days before, cut two restaurants. So we ended up cutting two locations, and then we merged on two different restaurants. One was black with Black Pearl, actually, and we were trying to build a tent in Michael Fair Park, which came in with hurricane winds, and we almost took out the whole market. <laughs> which we ended up having to flip that one inside of the vignette space. And then this one was the Sea Camp project. So Caitlin Bodowitz, myself, and uh, Som from Three Leaf actually built the mural in the background for the Sea Camp um, container. 
and we dropped this down next to uh, Blue Plate Diner, and we ended up using this as the main restaurant hub. Actually, when it got dropped down, I remember I had to almost, I slept in the container overnight because the security guard didn't show up. <laughs> and oh, wow. it didn't get vandalized. Um, so we ended up having that and getting, once we got that built, but we ended up hosting um, Zinn, Black Pearl, and uh, um, Blue Plate Diner. And we did some really amazing pop-up dinners uh, out of this space. Well, I got a, a comment here from, oh, Kenny Wirtak. So um, Remington Renovations, they were kind of the, uh, or at least for a few of the years, kind of the, man, the main GC to help with the event. And um, I know that with on a team alone, there was a lot for us as general contractors to do. I can only imagine how much um, Kenny and his team contributed. Um, That's actually where I met Ken, that picture. Oh, really? Yeah. That's actually where Ken and I met, and he asked if he could get involved. So nice. once he did that, then, yeah, the rest was history. Ken was like the absolute warrior. So what was Ken's question? Well, and who helped move that vignette to the home show? Oh, <laughs> yeah. so actually, um, so during 2017, we had a, an opportunity to do some stuff with the home show, and they wanted to have a really cool preview. Um, and, and sadly, my brother passed away uh, opening weekend of vignettes. Um, so I was kind of down and out and didn't really have the, the gun, gum shot to keep kind of going. I needed to take some time off uh, after the couple of months of preparing. And Kenny jumped in uh, and picked up the pieces for us. He, he literally said, this, is, this opportunity is not going. I'm going to help do this. So he, like, single-handedly with his crew, moved two to three vignettes and the bison from the 2017 vignettes to the home and garden show, just so that the, the opportunity wouldn't be missed. Yeah. And, and I remember he moved my vignette too, because I had knee surgery and uh, I couldn't spare my in-house team from contact to come and move it. So he, he helped out and did us a solid and moved it over there for you guys too, which was great. I'm trying to find the image of the bison for those who haven't seen it. Cause it's a remarkable little uh, piece in itself here. I know I got it in here somewhere. Bear with me as I stroll through. I'll find it in a minute here. So, yeah. So then how, how did it evolve then as far as like the culinary component of it? Because I know for the, the last couple of years, there was far more involvement on that level within, um, within it itself. Like, for example, here we had, you know, Range Road was involved and other people helping with the event. How did, how did this happen? So, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate. Like we've worked with like, Edmonton's best restaurants like through and through some of the best ones I mean um, I always see design uh, being such a huge thing of the restaurants and experience when you go for a dinner just how they lay out and they're just so symbiotic of each other even when you meet the people who have these amazing restaurants in Edmonton um, you can it's just an art themselves the food they prepare mm -hmm. and how they do so it was the vision was just like, how can we amplify these amazing local restaurants complementary to through design and art? Um, I mean, the first couple were just small pop-ups. The following year, we ended up building our full own restaurant because we thought it might be easier uh, and then deck it out a little bit. Um, that was a huge undertaking. If we want to cycle back to Ken, I don't know how many hours he spent building an insane deck and how much fighting with the city I had to do to get sea cans dropped off on private property. <laughs> but um, and I think that kind of got it going. And, and restaurants, in terms of being able to market and, and gain, gain an audience, a lot of the time is they have a very short window. It's, if someone comes in and they have a really good experience or a bad experience, that may make or break, whether they tell a 1,000 people or 100 people about the restaurant mm -hmm. and or if they actually come back to your restaurant. So we saw the Vignettes Designing Series is an amazing way to connect people with the actual chefs and people behind the restaurant. You're getting an intimate group setting of a very private dinner up to 20 guests maximum. And they're able to connect, romance their food, the thought behind where they get their products, how they go mm -hmm. through their philosophy of the restaurant. And I find when you have a meal like this and you're tasting and you're engaging and you're hearing all this from the actual artists themselves, you just build such a better bond with this, this establishment. So it was a really great way for them to generate some really good, faithful, long life clients. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's so many good restaurants at Edmonton. It's crazy. We're, we're very lucky as a city. I think, I mean, when we first moved back to Edmonton, it would have been 12 years ago. I mean, it was a different scene. 
but we were hard pressed. I mean, there were some good restaurants, but not like there is today, right? Yeah. We're, we're really fortunate now that the scene has really developed. So uh, let's talk back about our giveaway items, speaking of great restaurants. So Lee's offered up a $50 gift certificate for Black Pearl. Um, so to be entered into the draw for the gift certificate, you need to enter or solve this very difficult puzzle or question, whatever it is. What is the shape of the vignettes logo? There's a very solid hint on the screen, not as bad as the first one I gave, but anyways, enter your answer into the comments to be entered into the draw. We'll do a random draw at the end of the show um, and we'll go from there. I found the bison. I'm gonna pull it up here, or I had found it. This, I, this Instagram platform has some limitations with how I can display stuff. There we go. Oh, of course my head's in the way. <laughs> ah. Anyways, well, there's the bison. That's terrible that my head's in the way. The oh, best it ever looks. Look at yeah. that. <laughs> there you go. At least my head's not on his ass. That's better. <laughs> um, anyway, that was a, a really cool thing. And I mean, I'll show a picture of this tree you guys made as well. In which, what year was this? I wasn't, I that, wasn't there. This must have been 2016. And that, this whole section came out of necessity. Like I said, we found this amazing unused old Sobeys on, uh, on the corner of Jasper and 104th Street and hadn't been used in like three years. And it took almost eight months for me to secure the venue. I literally had a girl at Moray from EDC on my shoulders peeking in the only little crack that you could actually see through the hoarding. And luckily the foreman saw us doing this and he let us in. Uh, and he said, he gave us all the head contacts in Toronto to call to get the space. And he said, don't ever tell that I gave you <laughs> these contacts. <laughs> and I bugged that woman literally every day for about six months. And she finally said, okay, go for it. Nice. Uh, but anyway, we had this huge space and we were working with Belvedere. So I was like, well, we got to tie up a good, you know, 5,000, 6,000 square feet. So this is actually the entrance. The foreground there is a big mossy hill. And they're about 10 foot long tunnels you'd walk through to get into the very Fred Penner-esque style into the garden bar. And then you were greeted with this, like literally a, a redwood tree. It goes up about two stories and, and the span around it was about 10 feet. And Eric from Relic Wood had all this unused bark and he like, just dropped it off by the butt load. And I remember like Kate and Bodowitz hauling in load after load on tarps for us to build this. It took probably about three to four 18 hour days of nonstop going. I had Aaron from there, Doug was involved. Everybody, I think that a part of that show came in and put a little bit of bark and, and or made some of the leaves for that thing. Oh, nice. Yeah, beautiful, right? And it's amazing to see what can be done with a space, right? I mean, while we're on the topic of like greenery. There you go, that's um, the tunnel. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, a pretty, pretty amazing experience and I think We'll talk a bit more about experiential design and marketing later, but I think that this was really something that um, was starting to, I guess, get your wheels churning because I know now that's a big part of what you do. But before we but get into that. cool about that with this is like, we were able to get uh, Two Buds Floral involved, like as a maker, right? And they came into our show quite a lot and, and uh, like people overlook that as the craft, but these florist artists bring so much to installations and, they were able to help us make this install just phenomenal. In the background there, you can actually see through the tunnel. That's a, the Belvedere cube we designed uh, with Retrofit. Um, and they built that to look like the logo of Belvedere. And then the girls came in and decked it out. And they made fresh fruit cocktails from all the plants and stuff. Nice. Yeah, I, didn't, I missed that year. But man, I, I looking through the photos, I was like, man, that looked like a super cool event, for lack of a better term. Yeah. It was great because our capacity was 3,000 people, I think. <laughs> so it was nice. got to be huge. Speaking of floral stuff, I don't know if it was the same. Uh... <laughs> there, yeah, that yeah. same two buds as well, I believe. Yeah, nice. So I got some, a bunch of photos downloaded here, and there's no real way for me to put them in any sort of order. So I'm going to just whack them all on through some pictures, and we can talk a bit about them if you want or – at the very least, they're they're pretty to look at, and people might be inspired by something to do with them. But this is from a recent show. I, I remember this space. I've hung out in there a bit. Yeah. So that actually, that's SDA. That was we've always worked with the Student Design Association since the beginning. Um, every year, I kind of reach out to the kids, and if they have it in their plans, they'll, they'll be involved in the show. Um, 
this one's really funny because when we were planning uh the the lead girl on this was her name's mickey and she calls me from germany doing an internship and she's like we're going to use coroplast as our main building material and i'm like, uh-huh okay <laughs> maybe you might want to step up your game a little and she's like no, no, no. and she's like we're gonna do we're gonna do origami with it and i was like okay well how do you see it adding to it like i'm open to the idea just show me and she picks up this piece of core glass off the ground she goes just like this and she folds it into that archway that you see behind you going down there and she's like like that i was like okay i'll just shut up and let you do it <laughs> obviously better at this than i am and they yeah. created that whole thing on a limited tiny tiny budget just out of core glass and it was a beautiful beautiful install yeah no doubt there was a really cool space to to hang out in for sure there's that one. here's another one of the restaurants i guess that was you guys build this space for the event is that what happened with this one actually this is it's funny I, so we worked with alta fab um out in niskew and this used to be a bus stop for a uh for sin crew so they, they wanted something where the guys that would have to wait for the bus every day to come they didn't want to have to wait outside and freezing cold so they designed this amazing structure but once they did with it they had nothing to do. It was just collecting dust. So when we approached them to build us a sea can restaurant, they said, well, why don't you take this really cool design space and, and renovate it? So they mm -hmm. offered that up and we were like, absolutely. It just turned out amazing. Yeah. And they, who, who would have thought that a bus stop could be used like this? Right? Exactly. Well, it helps when the bus stops made of these huge laminated <laughs> seams and stuff too. Yeah, it's very true. Here's a shot from, it must have been 2017, I'm assuming. Yeah, that yeah. year's team was the Canadian Shield. So that's uh, is Canada one one fifty, I believe. And I remember that was such a funny year because they were dumping so much into like painting garbage cans and doing all these things to commemorate uh, Canada. And I was I was pushing for them just to donate back to uh, the Indigenous community, uh, and that's kind of what spawned some of our ideas. But in the end, we were trying to get funding to do some amazing things, and this was just to represent the coastal region. So this was our water bar. Yeah, that was a lot of fun in there. Actually, that was a nice place to hang out during the gala for sure. Now, here's, I guess we let's talk a bit about sponsors for a second because I know that it, it took a lot of sponsorship to help get the events pulled together in the end and. And uh, I know that Avenue Magazine came on, I guess, as, what would you call that? Title sponsor? Primary sponsor? Yeah, they came on title just to be our media sponsor. Um, but really, a lot of it, like, this show doesn't happen without the sponsors. I mean, I take usually about, a, you know, six, six to months to a year to personally go out, fundraise, uh, and create these experiences that will at least try to give uh, these design companies or suppliers some return on their investment. Mm -hmm. uh, and connect with it but it, it it takes a lot to get them to buy in once they do buy in um we we gotta like over deliver with them so i know this looks so like when you just look at it it's a bunch of cabinets on the wall and stuff like that but this was only like the ice tip of the iceberg right. for this uh install was you'd actually open up those cabinets there's a secret uh sign inside and you'd actually that small little red one you'd push and you walk into this amazing room full of keon's artwork um and yeah i got a guy making smoke uh old fashions inside of it that room was yeah. a hit yeah I love yeah that one. it was it was hard to get in though and again ken from reventon great job on the secret door yeah he did two yeah. secret doors in that room yeah true enough yeah so i guess you know like you know the sponsorship for sure is a big part of it and again i think i mean it it worked right because i mean some of the sponsors that were involved i wasn't aware of as a general contractor or hadn't been exposed to them directly and it gave me an opportunity to get to know them a bit and uh we do work with some of them now and uh and it's, it was great but you know we talked about these floors here briefly earlier and we should talk about them again because i think it's something that's you know i mean that's a painted finish on the floor and like how it just transformed the space right and i think oh. it's just one of those things where it's just like when I first saw it, which was in 2000, I guess, 17 in the basement, you guys had painted the floors too. And I was like, you know, I left my little space one night and came back the next day and it was like, holy, look at this floor. This looks amazing. And what, when did this happen? And I'm like, oh, it's paint. Well, that, and it, see, that wasn't even planned. Like Aaron from River City, he was like, no, I'm not just going to let this happen. I'm going to do something awesome. And he, as he always does, he wants to do something over the over the top and everything he does so i think him and uh, grady wallace 
stayed up all night stenciling that 2017. Uh, once we saw that, Aaron and I had talked as, of creating some kind of stencil. I told him kind of what the idea I was looking for, and him and his team came up with the cut stencil to do it. And I think a lot of the, his customization and, and building these things I, I might have spawned even more for him now opening up Gion Tile where he was seeing that he can create his own things. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not saying that this was it, but at, he's just such a go-getter and creative guy. Um, him and his wife, uh, Chelsea, they, they, they go over and above. And I think these are these good, great examples of how they, they customize the space and transform a space. No doubt. And I would say that, you know, one thing that Vignettes has done over the years is has planted a lot of seeds, you know, within artists, contractors, designers, makers, you know, I think it's one of those things, people who aspire to become, maybe they're, they're in a job they don't want now, maybe they wanted to try becoming something, pursuing a passion or a craft. I'm hoping that the Vignettes Design Series kind of open their eyes up that look, people can do that. And there's a support network for these people on some, on some level too. Uh, we'll keep whack and mulling through some of these. Giselle. Yeah. She's one of my favorite participants. She's so fun. <laughs> yeah, she brings a lot of energy to it. That's for sure. Well, it's because they back in 2017, her mural's still up there. She, she, we had a mural competition where we commissioned, uh, it ended up being Trevor and Annalisa of Rust Magic, who, yeah. who won the bid. And Giselle called me the next day. She goes, well, there's lots more wall space. Can I pay to do my own mural? And I was like, if you go ahead if you want to. And Giselle came up with that amazing one. Now it's like a staple in the downtown core that I seriously gets photographed every day. Yeah, for sure. I got a photo. I'm trying to find the picture because I mean, everyone's probably seen it. They might not have realized it, but uh, yeah, well, I guess I don't have the picture here. It's too bad. Yeah, it's a beautiful building. I think I have a shot of the other side of it here, but uh, yeah. yeah. I thought I had hers too, but that's too bad. Anyhow, I guess we were at a 142. We got, you know, a bit of time left here and we could talk about vignettes, the design series and the spaces all day long, but I'd like to spend a bit of time talking about what, what you're up to now. A, what is the future of the vignettes design series and also kind of what, what you're putting your energy into now and, and what you see for you and your future and what, as well as for the vignettes design series. Sure. Uh, so prior to COVID, we were looking at how do we actually change the vignettes model because um, anyone involved in it or anyone that's kind of gone through the ringer, it's, it's so much work. You're taking over an unused building, you're transforming it into this work of art. And then a few months later, it's, it's deemed gone. So we were dumping, you know, hundreds of thousands, technically on paper, if you were to charge millions of dollars into a space that only gets used for a month. And we thought that was really broken. So um, my partner and I, uh, Vicky, we were looking at getting a permanent space and having an actual permanent gallery that we could host vignettes, do a refresh and actually rotate some of the vignettes year round. It just seemed like a better model that we'd be able to get more use out of. Um, as we were looking to pull the trigger on, on a space, COVID actually hit. Um, and that definitely just changed our whole plan because if you're not allowed to have gatherings or social interactions or, you know, a volume, kind of a volume based business, um, that wasn't going to work for us. So we, we kind of slid back and just had to reevaluate the, you know, and, and judge the landscape as it kind of flowed. Um, once we produced that, we, we, we literally kind of sat tight and watched the landscape unfold and we kind of saw that we you know, with no confidence in where COVID was going and still no confidence in where it's going to be that we couldn't uh, take those steps to possibly have a show this year. So as the dominoes all fell into place and we kind of look for the, the future, um, I mean, our plan to still possibly have a, a permanent space is definitely something that we are still considering. Um, but as we move through this year, we're looking at possibly doing a smaller outdoor social distance event um, unfortunately, with this landscape, it's, it's just so hard for events uh, to go on as planned, and especially to the, to the scale and caliber that we look to do them at. Um, it does make it difficult to see if we can deliver a return on everyone's investment. Um, 
So as we, as we planned that, that the idea of possibly having a permanent gallery is still alive. Um, and we're in the works of possibly doing a, an outdoor event coming for the winter, just knowing that parents are going to be faced with not many choices during the cold winters. Um, we thought maybe we could bring some joy to, to the winter months and do something outdoor. Yeah, that'd be great. I think it's a good idea. You know, I mean, I think it's one of those things where, you know, it's, it's tough, man. I mean, COVID has been such, such a gift and curse, depending on how you look at it. Right. I know for me personally, it's really helped me to reprioritize things in my life and the family, which has always come first, but now there's far more emphasis placed upon that. I'm fortunate that in contracting, we've still stayed pretty busy for the most part. Um, but it's been so tough. And we talked about the restaurants earlier and small bars and things like that. And that's, that's a tough go for sure. You know, when you look at how it impacts events, right? I mean, some people now are not going to events, but get for their own, you know, to take care of themselves and be safe. And it's, it's one of those things where I look back, I think about the VIP galas was such an amazing event for me and my circle of friends to go to. And I don't know if I would go this time because of, you know, because of the obvious. So I think an outdoor event would be great. I certainly, you know, um, hope that it can happen. And if, you know, you need some assistance with that, then, you know, be lots of people, myself included, would be happy to help out. I'm sure it's just a matter of what makes sense for you and, um, you know, time in it. So it's not in February. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it. That's the thing with those, right? It's like, can we get it off before it gets to the, the February cold? Or is it something that we have to prolong till March? It's just that moving target and it's really tough. And, and you touched on bars. It was actually really interesting. We were working on a, uh, the cabin, which is formerly urban tavern and quite literally opening day was the weekend right before, as COVID hit, right when COVID was coming in and they were going to start sanctioning it off. So these guys literally, um, literally had to pull the pin on their brand new bar as soon as it opened. Yeah. But as as the restrictions rolled back, serendip there, yeah, you're pulling up serendipitously enough. Like we designed spaces that were very much social distance. So this is the outside of a a booth that we reconstructed um, with Bob uh, designs by Bob, uh, helped build, rebuild this whole entire vision. And this is actually a double seated booth. I think they can only fit one one group in there at a time. But we built all these in individual cabins as well. So they've actually been able to flourish during COVID. They're not be able to nice. capacity, but they at least have the set up for social distancing. Nice. Let me uh, let me take you viewers on a bit of a tour here. Here is this trailer that they took. Clearly not in tip top shape. Not somewhere I want to sit down and have a drink in. That's for sure. And I think you guys realized quickly that it was in worse shape than you thought. Here you are back to the drawing board, completely refurbishing and redesigning this unit to bring it around to be, you know. Uh, a super cool looking useful space to hang out in which is fantastic yeah I, I mean and that's this is all like bob like i came up with the vision i helped do a lot of the labor but he literally patterned out and stick by stick rebuilt the thing and i just the guy is amazing at what he can do he's been very instrumental and in, i come up with some crazy ideas i sketch out what i think work and then you know, he, he whittles away with the design and, and turns it into to, to magic. And then we just collaborate on the setup. So it, it's pretty cool when you can have uh, the collaborative efforts to make your visions come true. Absolutely. Hey, it's got a comment here from Aaron River City Tile. I just want to say that it can't be overstated how much Lee and Vignettes has done for the design and build community. Your, your pal. Hashtag legend. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it must be Aaron. Anyhow, let's before we move on too much further, let's talk a bit about the giveaway item because it'll be coming up soon. So Lee has offered up a fifty dollar GC for Black Pearl gift certificate. So to be entered in, enter in the comments the shape of the vignettes logo. At the end of the show, we'll do a random draw. The winner gets the fifty dollar gift certificate uh, for Black Pearl. Amazing place right. to eat. I'm blowing kisses to Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. There we go. <laughs> I was like, oh, he's blowing kisses at me. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm not sure how long he's been tuned in. We've mentioned him quite a few times. but Yeah, he's, he's just, he says he's in and out quickly. He's working on the uh, on his showroom or his warehouse. Um, let's talk a bit about some of the stuff you're doing right now. So I know that you've been working on this place. Where is that image? Numo Cannabis. Yeah. 
tell us a bit about this. Well, it's really cool, actually. So I get sometimes it's kind of really cool. And it's, 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 you know, sometimes when you run your own business, you get down on yourself and you're not feeling like, you know, like what to do next, or you're not that proud. And then the owner of this uh, dispensary, Numo, he had two little dispensaries and he reached out. He said, like, I've, I've been a fanboy of yours and, and vignettes and I love seeing what you're doing. So he actually has a tiny little dispensary in the back of this building and the city wouldn't let him put up any, uh, any signage out on it. And he's on 124th Street. And so he was really worried about that and he really wanted to make an impact. So on the outside, I said, well, you got this alley. Let's transform it into your own walking billboard. Uh, it's been now coined Green Alley <laughs> on 124th Street, which is super <laughs> cool. Um, the inspiration for it came out, obviously, out of his logo there. It's just the swirling things. Um, and we were able to build, he actually commissioned us to build an infinity room as the entrance to go inside the dispensary. So if you're over 18, you can actually go into this infinity room. As I say, over 18, my little guy's in there. <laughs> that was actually the thing before they got their actual license. So he was allowed to go in it. But it's a 12 by 12 infinity room which is a room that's lined with mirrors all the way around so when you're actually in sorry i dropped my ipad stand there um when you're actually in this it it actually does take the effect that it looks like it goes on forever and even when we were setting up like i remember trying to put the mulch in and i i forget that there was a mirror there and i'd smoke into the mirror or plaster my <laughs> face into the mirror as i was pushing the mulch because you're just looking up thinking it goes on forever it, it, it's a really really unique installation and, and kind of one of my favorite ones I've done so far. Yeah, super cool. And I, er, earlier on, I kind of referenced you the term experiential design, I guess. And that's something that we should talk a bit about because I think throughout the vignettes, we've seen this, this theme where what we make or teams have contributed, you know, it's resulting in not just a visual experience, but there, you know, at times it's interactive. And I think um, as far as like, as far as marketing is concerned, I think that's a very, very important consideration. More than just, oh, look, can I look in, at something and remember it? If you experience it, you're far more likely to remember it, have it make an impact. So let's talk a bit about how that's been your approach towards the work that you do now in the, in the marketing side of things. Yeah, absolutely. And as you said, like, it is about the whole experience. Like, I mean, when you're going to a restaurant or you go to an event or it, every little piece of that entire evening makes something more memorable. But I, if you look at your own, like a vacation, something that stands out, it was that whole experience that you remember that thing by. So as we build vignettes, we really know that I, you know, I have a hospitality background uh, for over like 20 years in the hospitality industry. And it was about creating experiences. So my, my partner and I, we really wanted to see, through vignettes we could see how people engaged in that experience was really doing it so it kind of gave birth to our new our, our firm was basically designing for experience and how we can deliver experiences for whether it's someone trying to market their business add to their business or just have those extra components to it so it's developed into a lot of hospitality or or promotional things we've worked with like to give an example the city of edmonton when they do New Year's Eve, they've called us. They, they're like, how can we get you involved? Like, we have all these people to come watch the fireworks, but that's it. Like, how can we change and make it more of an, an evening for everybody? So they hire us annually to create some really cool installations that people can engage in and fill those little time blocks as they wait for the fireworks to happen. Um, province of Alberta, same thing. They, they hire us to do some Canada Day stuff or, you know, like liquor brands. We were able to work with uh, Moet and Shandon and Belvedere uh, and Belvedere hired us to build the first bar ice bar not out of ice but actual look like it had ice components to it to display their their brand new branding for the first time in North America so we were able to build this incredible bar and deliver it to Van Springs Hotel uh, where it's on their their Rundle lounge patio that people get to engage with or we built an igloo bar uh, for Moet, and it was down at the Kananaskis Lodge where, where patrons staying there would be able to go out and sit and enjoy this amazing cocktail and champagne through this igloo bar that we built for them. So it was very serendipitous again through through the festival and, you know, kind of carving out this really kind of niche, more experiential design um, as opposed to what I was used to being more in the residential category. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that's great. It's certainly something that uh, you can feel it when you, you know, when you experience something like that, you, you know, you have, and you can touch it, feel it. Sometimes you can taste it. Depends on how you put it together, right? So um, right. let's talk about the giveaway item. We've got a winner, Capensis Metalwork. There you go. We have some Vignettes alumni. You're the winner of the $50 at the Black Pearl. Good for you. I think the time I ate there was with you, coincidentally. So good for you. You're going back. There you so go. Thanks for, thanks for that, Lee. And that's, uh, that's Elena Dornbush. You might remember Elena back from the... Absolutely. I cool. get the seafood linguine. If you if you like pasta and seafood, get the seafood linguine. We had it the other day, and it's like enough for like four people. <laughs> nice, right on. Well, yeah. I mean, what more can I say, Lee? I think that uh, you know what what vignettes the design series has done for the community has been significant. You know, like Aaron from River City Tile said, like it's been had such an impact upon our community and. Uh, it's inspired us and it's motivated us and it's made us realize we're not in this alone. And, uh, you know, now, now it's celebrated, right? So I really look forward to seeing what's next, what comes from you next as far as what's available, um, you know, as far as an event goes and like, like a vignette, you gotta be fluid, right? So here we are. Oh, COVID. Well, that's just one of the challenges facing the team this year. Right. So, yeah. I guess I'd like to just end, like, the thing is, I'm, I get lots of accolades, I get lots of recognition for vignettes, and, and basically what this is, it's, it's nothing without all the amazing participants who have built, built this. Um, you know, we've always wanted to get this off the ground outside of grassroots, where it could actually be something where we're actually paying people to be in, inside of it. And I think that was kind of the next reiteration is where we get to award these amazing creatives um, outside of recognition and marketing and camaraderie and exposure. I, I really, we hope to take this to the next level to really celebrate these artists even further. Um, because like I said, I mean, I get a venue, I do a lot of work to get the space, but it comes down to the, these amazing people from Edmonton that create these spaces. Just takes a little bit of vision and, and some hard work. And then the rest is up to everybody that gets involved in the show. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's been great though. And I guess for those of you who aren't familiar with it, take a look at uh, Vignettes YEG's um, Instagram. Here we go. Take a look. It shows a lot of imagery from past years and it's so cool. I mean, if you haven't had a chance to ever check one of these out, put it on your radar for something to do when it, uh, if it happens again. <laughs> we have uh, Kevin A. Wilson, no, sorry. It's Alyssa, it's a reality show competition. There you go. I guess that's one angle we could put on it. it. That would probably be the best reality show ever. You could follow each team and all their drama and then yeah. all the drama I usually go through. I, I think it's funny. I, we actually got told as we were wrapping up vignettes this year that in behind, we secretly call it the vignettes rule, but they changed how they do permitting in our city around special events based on all the red tape that I crush every year and cause so much hoopla <laughs> inside the city hall that they kind of get sick of me a little bit, but they actually had to change how pop-ups are done in our city based because of vignettes and the scale it, it, it actually is. Yeah, like I see, I remember last year, or, or yeah, last year, and you had some serious red tape to cut through and there was a risk of the show not happening at the end and, and you overcame and, we're really relieved that you did but yeah yeah well man what can i say like um great to get a chance to work with you a bit and you know be exposed to you and your creative mind and the approach you take and you really did assemble a wonderful village and uh together we built something great i'm excited to see what comes out of it next um if you are someone in need of some help with design and marketing then i think you need to reach out to this guy lee um, at the very least, you know, it'll be out of the box, um, and, uh, and creative and it will inspire. So, uh, certainly good luck getting a hold of him, but you can, <laughs> you can reach out to Lee and, uh, you know, he'll certainly be able to help you out and put you in the right direction and then take good care of you. Um, thanks for coming on the show, Lee. It's been great chatting with you. We could have done this for two hours today. I'm sure there's, there's I'm so sure. much. I didn't show imagery wise or so many cool moments from the events and so many people that have helped out, you know, we've only touched on a few of, of the dozens that really deserve a shout out, but, uh, 
Absolutely. And, and to you, Paul, thanks for doing these. Uh, I love these podcasts that you're putting and connecting and, and, and continuing it. So like hats off to you. And I mean, without you and your crew, I know that a couple of years <laughs> in a row that the show might not have happened to the caliber or got done. So my hat's always uh, hats off to you. And, Thank you and very you. much. We got six seconds. I better wrap it up. This is Go the for Renovation Live. Thank you for joining. We'll see you next Tuesday.